you are all welcome to this post political briefing by the spokesperson of the party, uh, Comrade Chris Mswangwa. We will take you through the deliberations of the day and uh, once again welcome you all. Uh, I will not waste much of the time. Mm -hmm. The occasion belongs to the spokesperson at this point in minute. So over to you, Comrade Chair. Well, thank you. We had uh, our Politburo meeting today, the 363rd one. And uh, uh, it was, of course, chaired by the party president, Comrade E.D. Mnangagwa. And we started off by paying homage to the late president of Angola, uh, uh, former president of Angola, uh, President uh, uh, Eduard, Eduardo Dos Santos. Mm, he is the one who emerged as the leader of Angola after independence. And he, he would do, well, of course, it was the defeat of uh, colonialism of Portugal, but that was not only his, his victory. He also would later defeat uh, South African forces at the Battle of Quito Kinavale, one of the major battles of Southern Africa in modern warfare, where the South African army, the apartheid army, which thought because it was white and supported by the West, it was invincible. Uh, they were humbled at Quito Kinavale by the uh, Angolan forces. Of course, they were held by the Cubans. Uh, a feat, of course, which is similar to the one which was done by Zanla uh, patriotic, patriotic front, front forces at uh, Mavonde and Mapai in 1979. So Kitoki Novale is one of those signature battles of Southern Africa. And uh, Ambassador, um, um, President Dos Santos was the leader of Angola at that time. It would, of course, lead to the surrender of, of Namibia, and, of, the Namibia of the Southwest African colony by South Africa. Uh, and Namibia became free. And uh, so these are some of the many contributions of uh, the Angola and its leader to the east of Southern Africa. And it was befitting that uh, the sister party of MPLA, the people of Angola, and of course uh, the government of Angola and President uh, Lorenzo himself uh, do receive a minute of silence from the leadership of the ZANU-PF brother party. We were together in the trenches in the anti-colonial, anti-apartheid, anti-racist fight. Yeah, we trained uh, together in Angola. They hosted our forces, the Zipra forces, during the Liberation War. So you can see these are bonds which go very far. They endure today. Angola is now prospering. Its uh, petrol economy is doing fairly well. And there's, general, there's peace in the region and there's solidarity in the region. So this is how we started our meeting, by having a minute of silence in honor of the late President Dos Santos of Angola. Of course, the other thing is this defeat of uh, Savimbi, the eradication of the menace of the counter-revolutionary puppet Savimbi, uh, who had really made the life difficult for uh, the region by collaborating with apartheid South Africa and marauding uh, Southern Angola in particular. So he had many uh, feathers in his cap, and uh, we, are, we are saddened by his loss. May his soul rest in peace. We received a report on the very recently successful Women's League Conference, uh, which went, you know, which was colorful, and um, it brought out a new Women's League, league leadership. Uh, this was a follow-up to the Youth Conference. Mm -hmm. So one after another of the party conferences have gone well, uh, as we build up to our elective conference in October. Um, the upcoming one is the War Veterans League Conference, uh, which should come up uh, very soon. The president has got uh, an interim report, which he's working upon, and uh, further consultations are going on as to the final structure of the Veterans League. The veterans are the bedrock of the Zimbabwe Revolution. They are the, 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 also the crucible of the Zimbabwe National Army, uh, the Zimbabwe Defense Forces. And I repeat, the best army in Africa, uh, you know, we, we professional, disciplined. Look at what uh, uh, we did at the United Nations when the young girl, what, what's his name, the one? 
the kennel. The kennel, the name. And we need a name, you know. She, mm -hmm. yeah, if we can try to get it from, she did very well uh, uh, at the, at the uh, you know, under the auspices of the, under the command of the Secretary General of the United Nations. This is uh, the pedigree of the Zimbabwe Army, which owes its origin uh, to the war veterans. Some of them, of course, they decided not to become soldiers after the independence. They were decommissioned or they decided to leave. But they now uh, formed a league 42 years later, which is going to be part of the party uh, of the ruling of the Revolutionary Party. Uh, we have always been in the party in one way or the other, but now we have a structure. And we, we are very proud about our association with the party, which was born by the Zimbabwe people, but which was carried back to the Zimbabwe people through the People's War, which was fought all over the country. We, the war veterans, are master organizers. They are disciplined. They are visionaries. And after all, I mean, among all, they are unstinting patriots. It's a clarion call that now they are in the party. We want to settle once and for all the battle between those who think that there can be regime change in Zimbabwe and those who say it will never be. So we are, yes, we are very, very happy at the prospect of the War Veterans League becoming a, a, an integral organ of the party. Uh, the girl who did well was is Sharare uh, Wini. I think Major Winnie Winn Sharare, she, she did well. This is always in the tradition, like I told you. It says our army, though small, it has got competencies which uh, make us make a mark on the global stage. And she did it at the United Nations. Congratulations to Major Winnie uh, Sharare, you know, from the Zimbabwe Defense Forces. So this is, this is just symptomatic of the people who are associated with the birth of Zimbabwe, uh, how we, we've got our own army to defend our people. If your people are not defended, they can't work, they can't own, they can't go to school properly, they can't do any, their resources will be stolen. So this is what the Zimbabwe army does to make the Zimbabwe people feel safe at work on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, the army, together with the security establishment, the police, and 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 of course the, the the other security services. So the war veterans from that era, from the 1970s, the young men who sacrificed so much in their thousands, of which probably out of every five who went to war, only two came back alive, three died. So we paid we paid a heavy price. It means they are patriots of unflinching loyalty to the state of Zimbabwe, and they are also very much attached to the ruling party because it is through the banner of the ruling party that they organized the Zimbabwe independence struggle. So it's a, it's, it's a symbiotic marriage. We make the, it's just like recently in America when there were challenges by Trump to the American constitution, it was the Pentagon which intervened. <laughs> So you see, you know, you know, you know, you know, people who try to say that the army of George Washington could not behave in a Republican manner. It is a Republican army from George Washington. And when the Republic is under threat, the, um, the Pentagon did intervene to stabilize the American situation. So we take also from the American tradition. The only thing is that because, uh, you know, of uh, another post-imperial attitude or, 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 or probably tinged with the racial attitudes against Africans. They don't expect the Zimbabwe army to, de to behave in a similar manner to the one which they, are, they have demonstrated only recently <laughs> when Trump tried to threaten the republic. <laughs> so we are happy again to say we are very much attached to our party and we will be playing an important role once the organ is full in place. All the, the, the aspects of it are being worked out, and we expect that their conference will be as successful as the other two, and then it will lead to the big one, where, where we will reaffirm our, uh, our mandate. We will get, we'll get a new mandate from the people for five years so that we can carry out the many programs which are now changing the lives of Zimbabweans 
on a day-to-day -day basis under the, the new republic led by President E.D. Mnangagwa. We also took note of the progress which ZEC is, is making in elect as we prepare for the big plebiscite, the national harmonized elections next year. Uh, now the registration is provisionally complete. It's still continuing, but uh, people can now begin to inspect uh, their names. I think there is a code number, uh, star 265 hash, where everybody should uh, phone to try to confirm whether you've been registered and if you haven't been, you proceed to register. We fought for independence. We were supposed to come bullet to office. We decided to come ballot to office in 1980. So the electoral tradition is very strong from the beginning of the republic. It's the ZANU PF way of doing things. That's why we broke, and I repeat, we broke no lessons of democracy from sanctimonious uh, pontificators in the West who want to teach us about their demo democratic standards. When ours was won by through blood and iron, through sacrifice. So we value our democracy. We came to power, even with the verge of military victory, not through bullet, but through ballot. So we are looking forward gladly to the elections in, 19, in, in 2023. And we are calling upon those who are Democrats in Zimbabwe from even the opposition parties in their various alphabetical acronyms <laughs> uh, you know, to please uh, prepare for the elections so that they can be tested by the people of Zimbabwe. As you can see, we had a meeting today, very structured. We went, uh, we're talking about cells, Musangano Kuma cell. We now have a cell day every month where we are going to look at the electoral register at the unit of the village, of the cell, of the district, to see who has not been registered and who has been, who needs to be registered. We are also taking advantage of the fact that the government has announced that they will now make it easy for people to get registration certificates. It's important that people get registered, and it should be the easiest of things, because how do you plan an economy if your people are not in a statistic? Mm -hmm. So we are very happy that the government of President E. D. Mnangagwa saw it fit to simplify the procedures of people who should register so that they get into and be accounted you know, by the Zimstat, by the population, and eventually by the electoral register so that they can vote. We now need to know where, who, is, who is where in Zimbabwe. And because of that ease of registration agenda uh, initiative from the government, the party is mobilizing its people at basic level, basic uh, village level, so that they do register. Uh, we want our president to deliver a victory bigger than the one in 1980, which ushered us into independence. Because the changes which he has been making under the Second Republic within three years, they are far reaching, and they are reaching every corner of the Zimbabwean life, but they are also reaching every echelon of Zimbabwean political life. Um, you know, we, 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 we see the emergence of, uh, I mean, the arrival of uh, global class business investors in our mining sector. You know, the, what's happening in the steel sector, these are Fortune 500 players, number one, some of them in the steel sector in the world. They are now in Zimbabwe. Uh, we also see companies like Varun, the biggest bottle of peps in the whole world, expanding their production every other month, you know, every other two months. You know, now they've got almost 10 production lines. You know, in the, in, in, you know, these are billionaires who are coming. So Zimbabwe is beginning to make its mark, you know, even in, 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 in business publications. You know, I was in Canada recently where we attended the, attended the mining conference and everyone was talking about the lithium sector of Zimbabwe. So here's a country which has got resources, which are world class. They were being monopolized by small-minded uh, post-colonial players. They were also being mismanaged by a coterie of, uh, of uh, village-style leaders before the, second, before the advent of the Second Republic. Now these resources are being pried. They are being pried at the appropriate capital levels of the global uh, uh, business community. So it's beginning, this is a very top echelon of business. 
uh, engagement by Zimbabwe and will become a major steel producer next year. You know, just at a time when the Russians and the, the Ukrainians have destroyed the steel plant, you know, as if, as if South Zimbabwe will be also now getting to be a major steel producer. We discussed these things in the political because they change the GDP of the country, they change people's lives, they bring back the diaspora because the skills which they acquired over the years in foreign countries can now be absorbed back at home because the level of economic activity is commensurate to the skills which they have been acquiring in the various jurisdictions abroad. This is a very good thing, a good message to the diaspora. We discussed that. We also discussed it, its impact on the youths. They have been sent to school. They need to jump from education to skills. You can't jump from education to skills unless there's capital, foreign direct investment, which brings in management expertise, which brings in technology, which brings in other methods of doing business into the country. And these are all coming into the country now. This is an opportunity now for people who have been educated by our system to turn their educational achievements into skills, you know, where, where they can deliver products. As I say, the mantra of the president now is world-class goods made in Zimbabwe for the global market. I repeat, world-class goods made in Zimbabwe for the global market. What does it mean? It means more exports. We have doubled our exports in the last couple, in the last three years. We want to treble, to triple, to quintuple, to decipher our exports so that this country becomes a very prosperous nation in line with the vision 2030. So these are the things which we, we discussed, the performance of the economy. We are also glad that uh, you know, there are young people who have gone into the gold sector in a big way. And now you know, there are over 60,000. We are reorganizing them so that they get proper training also, they get proper support, they get proper credit facilities, they get marketing support. The president has made gold pricing parity on the global stage. No more selling gold in dead currencies to smugglers who take it out. Now it's being traded within the country. That's why we can begin to have a gold coin. You see, other countries, they work hard to export so that they earn money. Zimbabwe has got an additional bonus to that. We dig the ground and we dig gold and we dig money. So gold, gold has been very generous. That's why we also discuss the issue of the currency. Why would the currency behave differently when the whole economy is behaving in a certain manner? You see this finger? This finger points to what your body is doing. <laughs> if this finger begins to behave differently from the body, it means there's something which is wrong about this finger. And that's what we the same akin to our currency. Why is our currency behaving differently? when all the other economic fundamentals are doing well. So that's an issue which is beginning to unravel because the business sector is beginning to put it itself. Those who rent money from others, who are renters of money from others, who run a rent economy, or those who are parasites, they will soon be exposed by those who are working very hard because they want to keep their value. So it's good because the, pre the way the president is going to, uh, to, to, to is managing the economy, it is also introducing an element of self-policing, but it is also breaking cartels. We are fixing prices of everything. I mean, we are and, 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 and commandeering the, 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 the movement of goods. They are breaking up. These are the achievements of the Second Republic that a growing economy makes it possible for people to benefit from their hard work. And we, in this time, we are focusing on the basic people who are being made to suffer whilst their money loses value at night when they've worked hard during the day. This is going to change. And the statement by the Minister of Finance yesterday is reflective of a new aggressive and approach towards those who are bringing malfeasance, who are, uh, who are bad apples in our economy. So we discuss the issues which do matter, and we think we will get over this uh, the, 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 this issue of a deviant uh, occurrence, and which doesn't behave in tandem with the national fundamentals of the economy, so that we fully restore Zimbabwe's currency. This country has always had the strongest currency in the world because it was built on gold for a thousand years. There is no reason why we don't have a strong currency today, 
except for people who are trying to play footsie with our currents, it will not be allowed. And the president took note, the government is taking measures, and the political is applauding the measures which are being taken. And you are saying to the people of Zimbabwe, sooner rather than later, you shall have a proper national currency which, re which respects your hard work, which, make, which doesn't make you impoverish you whilst you are asleep. These are the things which were discussed by the Politburo. We also, you know, took note of the various executed projects. The president has been moving around the country, and we, we actually came to the conclusion that of all his visits, only 30% were rallies. Almost 70% were him visiting projects which are being completed. He's always going somewhere and there is a scissors waiting for him to cut a ribbon. Tauto chikira uto ete bandage jigunu. Ne moni yeku kata ma 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 ribbon ma projects. Awaruku ita president. And more of them are coming. And some of them, the scissors will have to be very big. They will have to be giant scissors. <laughs> because the projects are very big. Now, you contrast that with our, trip, with our triple C people. They have nothing to offer except to complain a day in and day night. They talk against the national institutions. They complain. Now they are taking each other to court about uh, supposed adultery and this. You know, these things, they don't feed people. You know, these stories that I'm hearing and I demand further. They have nothing to do with their people, you know, but uh, the party is gracing to what it is, a useless party which has no agenda, no structure, no constitution, no program, no policy, no ideology. The only ideology is hate uh, your country. The only ideology is uh, uh, praise America. Uh, you know, the only ideology is you know, in uh, in sanctions. And the only ideology is uh, creating uh, fake news. The only ideology is absolving themselves of responsibility. I mean, they always want to point about, you know, hey, there's corruption. All the cities rot, they run them, but nobody cares about what, what you know, about the councillors who have been MDC councillors for more than 20 years. So it's a part which is divest itself of any sense of responsibility. Yet they want it to be in state house. It won't happen because in 2023, our party, our political bureau today, was making sure that this party, which organized the Zimbabwe revolution, then organized the Zimbabwean state, then made sure that Zimbabweans are educated, then recovered the land of the people of Zimbabwe, then made the people of Zimbabwe feel proud that they are Africans among others. This party has got organization in its DNA, ZANU-PF. For 60 years it has been around. <laughs> we want to be around for another 60 years. And we are working a day in and day out, political bureau meeting after political bureau meeting, to make sure that we get well oiled, to make sure that we remain accountable to the Zimbabwe people so that we can win their vote. Because it is their vote which makes us legitimate rulers of the Zimbabwe people. So this is the preoccupation of the Politburo, how to organize the party for the elections in 2023. And our president is doing a fantastic work. We also want now to make sure that we carry out an audit of the projects which we, are, which we do, even at village level, even at district level, to see how those projects are impact, impacting the lives of our people. We want that because we want government service providers, agricultural extension officers. We want them to be accountable. We want people who do men and you know, people who deliver electricity from CESA, those who, do, who go about, you know, uh, giving uh, services like uh, uh, telecom, telecommunications. We now want them to be accountable, and the only way to be accountable is we carry out audit at the local level to see the impact or non-impact of the programs of government so that the president can appreciate this, the, the changes or the, or the absence of changes in the day-to-day -day people's lives in rural areas. So we want to become a, a government which runs its affairs, administers its affairs on a scientific basis because we want concrete information coming from the basic level. This is how we ran the war to win. And we did it without telecommunications, we did it without cell phones, and we did it 
you know, simply moving around, you know, we committed as ideological and trained soldiers. How much now can we achieve with all the marvels of modern technology? So we are mastering them. Now we are harnessing them, and we want them to be part of the organizational flair of our party so that our people get engaged with the government at every level so that service is seen to be delivered, not just talked about. These are the issues which we were talking today when we met as the Politburo. Mm. We are also very happy that, uh, uh, you, know, you know, the winter wheat, we are going to have 15 months on the Kenyan projections. And remember, electricity is being provided, water has been available. Never in the history of this country have we planted so much wheat under hectares. And by coincidence, it looks like the season has been smiling on us for, wheat, for winter wheat. Mm -hmm. It has been extremely cold, more than, you know, because I'm told of a certain behavior of the atmosphere. <laughs> so our wheat will do well because of the extended cold season. So we expect a very big harvest. It comes at a very good time because Ukraine, which supplies most of the world wheat, is in turmoil. We can't rely on imports. And why should we rely on imports? Actually, the president yesterday had a meeting with Adesina, the president of the ADB, the African Development Bank, and they were talking these issues. Of course, they talked about the debt, you know, trying to relieve, uh, to see how Zimbabwe's debt burden can be taken off its back so that the economy can gallop instead of being hobbled like it is doing right now. But one of the incidental subjects which came out, and the most exciting one, was that Africa must feed itself. Why should 40 million Ukrainians account for 70% of the food that is being supplied to Africa? It does not make sense. 1.4 billion Africans waiting for food from Ukraine. <laughs> eh? How is it? Eh? Less than 40 million people. And we have the savannas. If they can produce cocoa, African savannas, if they can produce excellent tobacco, if they can produce excellent cotton, these are non-edible crops which we, 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 we excel in as Africans. Why can't we also produce cereals to feed ourselves, to grow, to, to, to produce protein, to protein from, from meat products? So this is the new approach, and the president discussed that with the, uh, ADB president at Destina yesterday. So we expect that there will be more engagement of local and international capital in the Zimbabwean, uh, Zimbabwean agricultural sector, sector so that the Zimbabwean op or savannas can not only feed our population but also become part of the world food chain. If Ukraine can export from the black soils of the U of, 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 of the of, of, of Ukraine, why of the Danube Delta and the, and the other rivers, why can't we also export from the savannas of Zimbabwe? These are some of the things which we had discussed in the Politburo. So you can see the breadth of discussion was not only wide, it was very deep. Um, you know, he, 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 we also hail the farmers that are busy preparing for the summer crop next year. Uh, you know, we are we expect more of Kumbuza so that the, they can be food security at local levels. These are the good things which our president is doing, which I mentioned. You know, in Shona, there are ways, two ways of saying thank you. Usually, the tender. The tender is, 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 is not as serious as Maitabasa. You know, you know the, if a Shona person really wants to say thank you, she knows Maitabasa. So we want to say, good president, Varukitabasa. Yeah, this is what he's doing. This is in contrast to what the triple C people are doing there. But that's what we do. I'm not going to go out and thank you. Yeah, but the, the president wrote, Maitabasa. This is what is going on with the, with the man. He's working early hours, he's at work. Late hours, he's at work, covering every corner of the country, leaving nobody behind, engaging in international diplomacy to make sure that. Uh, we, 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 we do get friends from all over the world to come and invest in our country and prepare for our, our country for the global markets. So he's a hardworking president from a party with the history 
And uh, when we meet, we discuss how to make the people's Bible lives look better. There have been challenges, we admit. That's why we address them. Nothing is all rosy, but the prospects are moving in a bright way. This was the political bureau today. Uh, the other aspect, of course, which we was discussed was, uh, let me get my notes well, 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 where's the other page? Where's that? Excuse me. Okay, we are. Okay, it is, it is. You know, uh, our national profile is rising. There is excitement about Zimbabwe from the diaspora. There's also excitement uh, even in international sporting circles. You, s you know that we are hosting the International Cricket Union competition. This is good. Canadians are here. I don't know a number. Of, a raft of countries, they are all here in Zimbabwe. Remember, there was at a time when we were being discussed as being carriers in international sport. Now we are hosting international sport. This is credit to the Second Republic and the good work it is doing. So again, not President Maita Basa. You know, I, uh, this is now my, my refrain for a man who is working very hard. We also have our moot team, which went all over the world, mm -hmm. and one you know, all the way to the pinnacle of the EU, the you know, Zimbabwean debating prowess at global level. This is uh, Zimbabwe showing their metro. And, and this is, uh, you know, before we used to have headlines about Zimbabwe, Gunzi, Ngocha ni zatukwa, ngocha ni zatukwa, ngocha ni zatukwa. Now, <laughs> the, the headline has changed. We are being given, you know, accolades for achievements, for, for things which people admire. So we want to give the credit to the president and his team and his party and his government, but to the people of Zimbabwe for working very hard to make sure that we cast this positive image about ourselves. We, work, we go to school seriously. We work very hard, we are disciplined, we are organized, and now we are busy building our economy in every aspect so that we become the foremost progressive African country. And we can achieve that because we have done feats which no other African countries have done, like defeating the foremost imperial army of the era. It was done by Zimbabwe. So we are a nation of achievers, and the, and, and, and the, and the Politburo was extolling this aspect of Zimbabweans. So these are the main deliverables which we talked about. Uh, we also talked about uh, uh, the party working to making sure that the national institutions are protected, they are not uh, transgressed upon. You know, ZEC must be respected, many other institutions which work for the, you know, for the, the, for the to, to make sure that there is smooth uh, operations of day-to-day -day life we want them to be safeguarded. We don't want them to be transgressed upon. Of course, that includes our army. It is very professional. Our security structure, it is very professional. You know, they are you know, there may be bad apples here and there, but there's no systemic rot in our security apparatus. We are working very hard to make sure that the, it, you know, we improve upon that. And the police are going all out to make sure that robbers are accounted for. And, you know, so that people can work and sleep in safety. So these are these and the, the, this this in, in, is what preoccupied the Politburo today. We also had uh, reports of the uh, I told you about the women's conference, but we also planned for our upcoming party conference. And Dr. Obed Mpofu, the Secretary of Administration, gave us a thorough rundown as we prepare for this party conference in October. Uh, already, like I told you, we have one candidate who has been endorsed by the various organs, the youth and the women, and the chairman of the provinces. We expect the same from the World Veterans Conference, that they will endorse our president as the sole standalone candidate. And this should go all the way to the party conference, the elective conference at the Congress in October that President Mnangagwa will be our candidate, sole standalone candidate for the elective conference in 2020, the, the, for the national plebiscite in 2023. So uh, we also had the promotion of uh, Comrade Shirau, he is now the deputy of national security to Comrade Matuke. You know, he was recently in charge of our youth affairs, our youth league. 
So he has been promoted, and uh, the, his successor, the Youth League, whilst uh, still in, an, you know, in a deputy secretary position, is now allowed to debate issues in the Politburo, you know, so that we can get the reports of the wonderful work which the Youth League is doing. So these are some of the housekeeping issues which, uh, which, which, um, which occupied the Politburo today. Uh, I think I have uh, covered the breadth and width. We continue, the president called, we invoked his, uh, his, uh, his show number, you know, his logo, vernacular mantra, Apana Anosara, I, I think it's also the same in Devele. We want everybody to be part of the progress of the new country. You must save the party, not as a privilege, you know, we must save the party as a privilege and not a right, it means you must be humble servants of the people who elect, whom, who elect you to lead in the party. We want people to uphold the loyal to the party. We want discipline. We also want to avoid provocations. There are urgent provocateurs like what happened in Chitungiza. You know, you know, where people like Sakala look for publicity. We want to avoid that because we want to maintain peace in the country. We are the part of order, we are the governing party, we have a responsibility to make sure that there is peace, order and tranquility in the land. So we have told our people to be very circumspect if they are provoked and to always call upon the arms of the security of the state to intervene in such circumstances so that those who are properly constituted to deal with the, with the disorder you know, and, and, and criminality, and criminality can assume the, their job so that there's impartiality uh, which can be exercised through the court system. We don't want people taking the, ma the law into their own hands like what the MDC is trying to, to, to the triple C are trying to tell to, to, to their people. So these are, the, 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 the president is a constitutionalist and he was again invoking that we must abide by the laws of the land so that we have a country which works in peace and, make, and people can make, and make their progress without being bothered. I think I've covered the width and breadth of the deliberations today. I'm ready to entertain any questions and uh, uh, is there another issue which I left? Please, you can always, uh, which the president may have highlighted, I'm happy. Yeah, we're having by-elections in Gokwe. So we are going flat out to make sure that we retain the seat, which was those. Huh? Kabuyu. 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 Yeah, yes. Uh, comrade, our late comrade Chikomba, was it? Yes. Yeah, he, he passed on in an accident. So we are busy preparing for that election, and we are also calling upon the other parties to come and participate so that people can be given a chance to make a free choice as to whom they want to. Yeah, whom they will want to be their MP. You know, we, we are a democratic party. <laughs> so the triple C, please go to Gokwe, Kabuyuni, and the campaign, you know, in the elections. Yes, basically, you know, we, we are happy to embrace competition for the, play, for the vote of the people. Yeah. Thank you very much, Comrade Spokesperson, uh, for such an uh, elaborate uh, breakdown of uh, the today's business, the occasion of the 364th ordinary session of the political. Uh, so uh, at this moment in time, we're asking our colleagues to uh, bring any questions that they may have about issues that the spokesperson uh, has raised arising from discussion of today's political meeting. Over to you our comrades from the media for any questions. The spokesperson is, uh, is uh, here for that. He, he has invited the opposition to come to the, to, to go Kukabuyun to face us. Although, of course, he <laughs> he's aware that he <laughs> he, <laughs> it will not end well for the opposition. Well, it is, uh, yeah. Statistical wise. Yeah, but it's an indication <laughs> of what is going to befall them in, 90, in, in, in 2023. Yes. You know, it will not end well again for the opposition in 2023. Mm. Yeah.
no wonder we're beginning to get overtures even from their former supporters. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of uh, diplomatic uh, uh, olive, olive branches mm -hmm. being extended. Mm -hmm. But I'm not, uh, it's not my domain. Uh, but uh, I can safely say that uh, there's a, a, a softening <laughs> of, the, of, of the attitude towards President Idim Nangagwa mm -hmm. and ZANU PF by those erstwhile uh, inimical corners, our, our, our bouquet of friends keeps increasing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the uh, offers of friendship keep coming in. Mm -hmm. So this is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. It doesn't look like there is no question today. Yeah, uh, I don't know where, yeah, please do. Joseph. Uh, you know, the, the National Political Commissar is, of course, the party builder. He is the one who is responsible for setting up the organs of the party. So he carried out intensive consultations. We were involved. I'm the, of course, you remember me. I'm also in my head as the chairman of the War Veterans Association. We fought very hard since the time of Chairman Hunzi to make sure that the war veterans are, are recognized as an organ of the party. We are finally there. So the details of how to do it were the basis of the consultation and the guidelines are going to emerge from it. Of course, they are being supervised, I mean, super superintended by the Polity Bureau and the Presidium and uh, submissions were made and we expect a feedback. And after that, there should be elections for the organ and then they will be fully participating in the Congress of the party come October. Yeah. Thank you very much for, for, for that, uh, Joseph, from the Herald, our colleagues from the media. Where's Newsday? Uh, they are going to look through my children's picture <laughs> from Facebook and, <laughs> and uh, post me and my wife. I was even shocked <laughs> that... Uh, he and made yeah, a big boat, a <laughs> black headline that somebody is in, is in a plane. Yeah, every, How do uh, people travel uh, in yeah, modern day? <laughs> she's, she, she's a minister and she's, she's allowed to travel in business class. And I joined her and then it becomes a, a picture. You know, there's something which is not well there. Uh, there's something that the editor is smoking <laughs> that we don't know is yet. We'll we'll we we'll want, talk through it. We <laughs> want them to come here. They should ask and then, you know, you know, uh, you know, and try to give some the people of Zimbabwe something constructive so that the, uh, the opposition can campaign on a positive note. Mm -hmm. But taking pictures of people in planes and expecting that it will gain them support from the voter, uh, I'm not, I, I, I don't think it makes any, it doesn't make any an, an, an electoral impression in the minds of the voters. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. thank you so much for your time. It's always a pleasure having you around. Uh, now it's, you know, I, we, we, I promise you a trip to the steel plant. Oh, yes, it has to happen. There's almost a pilgrimage now going on there. You can't believe it. 30% of the work is done mm -hmm. at the steel plant. 30% of the work is done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we are, uh, yeah, yes. we have to organize a bus, a, a KTC bus, for the press to go there, uh, to go and see for yourself. A picture tells a thousand stories. Some of all this rubbish which comes about from, from the MDC and the triple C's on uh, social media. It's because their lazy minds are creating things. Mm -hmm. uh, for Zimbabwe, our yeah. for ZANU PF, our busy minds are, bu are busy constructing steel plants. Mm. <laughs> this, is, this is the world of a difference. <laughs> we are building power stations for the country. We are bringing huge drilling machines into Muzarabani mm -hmm. to look for 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 for, for, for petroleum. Mm -hmm. 
This is what busy minds from ZANU PF do. That's what President Mnangagwa spends his time scratching his head, you know, every night. Now Chamisa, you know, he never tires to talk about scandals from my area. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you very much for that comment, Professor. Uh, <laughs> we'll make them. Uh, thank thank you. you. So thank you very much, our colleagues. I know it's very cold, and uh, you really are eager to go and make friends with your artificial heater systems back home at Great and so forth. So please thank you very much for uh, the support that you continue to give us. I'm sure it also comes on the basis of uh, the ability of our spokespersons to speak sense and things that make sense. Otherwise, all of I are being sold to what air. It's unfortunate, but thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Comrade Spokesperson, for, thank you. for such a... Thank uh, you. All the best. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.